All right, welcome to the call, everybody. This is Katrina Sawa, the Jumpstart Your Biz Coach. Jumpstart Your Biz Coach with jumpstartyourbiznow.com and jumpstartpublishing.net. So I started a publishing company. Um, well, I've been publishing my own books for a few years now. And of course, I just kind of did a DBA, Jumpstart Publishing, right? Like, cool. And then my my clients kept asking me like, okay, can you help me with my book? Can you help me with my book? Oh, I have this idea for a book. I'm like, hmm, there's something to this. And of course I know a lot of publishers, you guys. And I know a lot of other book coaches. I am not the only one, but my approach is uh, let's get it done the most affordable way possible, okay? Because there's so many things we need to do in our business. Let's not have a very expensive book experience, okay? I spent six grand to get my first book done, my first whole book, right? Love Yourself Successful. Now it was very much worth the, the price because I had no idea what I was doing back then. And I was so busy getting clients that I didn't have time to learn the publishing thing, okay? So I just chose that option. Uh, and some people still charge around 6,000 to do a book and you know take it to print and all that. Um, some people charge $40,000 for this, you guys. Like, ah, like, I don't spend that. I mean, unless they're gonna like, like take you on tour across the country and put you up in hotels and do this big book tour and get you on Good Day, uh, Good Day, uh, what's the Today Show or something. Like, I don't know, like, I don't know if I'd spend that, right? So on this call, we wanna talk about the practical things you can do to get a book going, where you need to start. I wanna ask you, ask you, answer all your questions. If I don't know the answer, I will give you a resource or I will put your name down and I'll email you later. Maybe I can connect you with somebody. I know a lot about a lot about the publishing industry now that I've been in it for so long. I know a lot of people too in the publishing industry. So I don't do everything. I know ghostwriters, I know copy editors, I know uh, book designers. Um, some people I bring in on my, the books I do with clients. Some people I just recommend stuff. And I certainly don't have to do it all with you. And I'm not trying to sell you a big old package or anything. I want to just get you informed. Okay. I want to get you informed because I want it to motivate you to hurry up and get your damn book done. Okay. So <laughs> let's get books done faster and more often because they will lead to more credibility, more speaking gigs, more clients, more expert status and positioning. Uh, it just makes you look better and it, so it's more attractive to your potential prospects to be an author and especially when you have multiple books, okay? And now that I'm, I have multiple books, it's like addicting. It's addicting to just keep doing them. And like I have a bunch of friends who are doing compilation books, which is a a group of uh, authors get together, right? Co-author books. So you just write a chapter and then somebody compiles it and puts it out in their brand kind of thing. So I have I have a series of compilation books. Uh, they're the Jumpstart Your Blank book. All right, and I do one every year and every year it's gone to international bestseller on Amazon. So I published 50 authors so far. We put their pictures on the back, but now I have four authors doing compilations in their own brand, their own business and I'm helping them find the authors to pay them. It's a really great business model. So we could talk about that too, how to make money. So you can pay somebody to get your book done or you could have people pay you and get a book done. Like which way do you wanna go, right? So I like to throw out all the different options of books and how you can get books done. And honestly, you could do a quote book. You could do a book with all your blog posts. If you're a writer and you have a bunch of content, let's slap it together for a book, seriously. It's not gonna look slapped together the way that I show you how to do it, but the fastest book is the better book to do right away. And then you can focus on another book perhaps, or your story, the one, the Love Yourself Successful book. That one took me three years. I couldn't get it out of my dang head. And I didn't have a book coach at the time to help pull it out of me. Right, because my publisher didn't do coaching; they just did the logistical stuff, right, and I'm getting it done. Um, but they were not doing coaching, and so I could have used a book coach back then because it would have just got me stop overthinking about it all, right? Um, so uh, there's that, right? So we don't we don't want you to overthink this. So that's kind of what I was planning on this call today. We're just talking books. How do we get them done? 
we know the why. We know we we know we're gonna get clients from it. Use it as a big business card is my idea, right? I would give this away all day, every day, all year long, because so many people after they read it, now not everybody reads your book when they buy it, mind you, okay? But after they read it, then there's a good percentage someone's gonna hire me or come to an event or do something. So the reason I write my books, it doesn't have to be the reason you write your books, but the reason I write books is so people can experience me in one way or another, and then come to my website, come to a call with me, and perhaps sign up and do something with me, with a program, product, or service, okay? So that's how I like to help people write books, is, is use them as lead generation freebies kind of thing. Because when you do print these, that's actually very inexpensive to print your book nowadays. It used to be very expensive. It used to be that you have to get 3,000 books and put them in your garage and boxes and boxes of books, right? Because that's the only way to get the print costs down because you couldn't print them on demand back then. Like this was 15 years ago, 20 years ago. But now you can print on demand with Amazon. You can print five copies. I sometimes print 10 or 20 copies of my book um, at Amazon and just so I have some on hand, right? So, but when you use a publisher like I did, I can't just go print they don't do it that way. So this is something to learn. When you use a publisher, you do have to buy in bigger quantities sometimes. Sometimes nowadays they can give you smaller quantities, but the, the price break on the cost per book, I usually have to buy a hundred of these books in order to really make it like five bucks a book or something like that, which you know is kind of where you want it. On Amazon though, I can get these other books for much, much less than that. So I hope I'm giving you some ideas first off, but I, I wanted to throw the big picture out to you, right? So then we can spark some discussion around this and uh, see where we're at. So did I know some of you came on before I asked, you know, where are you from? Put where you're from. And if you have a book or two book or five books in the chat room, I wanna see who has books here. I see Luana has nine books. I, I didn't know you had nine, Luana. I knew you had at least five. So congrats to Luana for nine books. I know some of them are compilation books, which is totally fine. I have nine of my books are compilation books, you guys. So it's all good. Okay, so congrats to Luana. Um, Anissa doesn't have a book yet, but you're on your way. That's why we're here. Um, Maryland, Cindy is in Maryland, no book yet. Um, Dr. Laura, um, uh, I don't think you, you didn't put anything, but I don't think you have a book yet, right? But you so need a book, right? You have a story, you have a story. So there are so many different types of books. Who else has books? Anybody else? I don't see, anything. oh, I see Dr. Grace, uh, you have one, right? Hold it up, but hopefully you're, when you're on a call, you should have your book right here. Mine are behind me and I can just grab them. And sometimes I have extras over here so I don't deplete my shelf, right? So who has their books handy? I know Luana, you do, I teach you. Where is it? But you have your virtual background on so we can barely see it. See, that's not the good. This is the bad thing about a virtual background, you guys. Like, oh, so I see Rochelle, I see you holding up your book. Carson goes to school, yay. But yeah, you have to hold it like right here for someone to see it if you have a virtual background on. <laughs> so be careful with that. Be careful, right? If you're going to be doing a lot of virtual calls, make sure you can sit here and showcase your book, right? So things like that to think about. Awesome. Who else? Let's see. Kimberly has two compilation books, bestsellers, awesome. And uh, who else said the dissert? Oh, you have a dissertation. Okay. Linda, just thinking of writing a memoir of overcoming major health challenges, good for you. Yes, and Rochelle has her Carson Goes to School. That's awesome. And uh, Nancy is writing a series of three books. Good, that's awesome. Now, is it like a, is that not a fiction, Nancy? Or is it just a series of books like I have, like nonfiction? <clears throat> Mine are nonfiction. I mean, mine are fiction based in Colorado. Okay, so it's more story, like novel kind of stuff. Is that Novels. Right? Awesome, good. There's so many different kinds Awareness of, of troubled teens and homeless people and some solutions to help people. Love it, I love it. Well, I, I promise that some of you, if you could only come for like 15 minutes, I would answer your questions first before we go into anything else. Is there anybody that has to leave? Um, before the hour's up and wants to like get some questions out real quick. Anybody, you can unmute. Um, just wanted to make sure I honor that. Nobody has to hurry up. Okay. 
All right, if you do, just unmute or put something in the chat. And I've been coughing all night, so I apologize. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on. Okay, so how many, like this is an interactive call, you guys, because this is a discussion Q&A info call. So how many different kinds of books can we write? Just holler it out. Anybody? What kinds of books are there? I see children's books, right? So Carson has a children's book. And Nancy's writing fiction, so novels. Then there's the business, your system. Autobiography. Say again, Laura. Autobiography. Autobiography, right? Autobiography or a memoir. Yeah, it sounds I'm like gonna say you... anything you can think of can become a book. Perfect. Good answer, right? And so, what are the different kinds of books that you have, Luana? I have. Uh, mostly self-help. I have one that's a story that was written within an anthology. Mm -hmm. And then I have one that started out as a journal that turned into a book and uh, kind of what I've been teaching people here lately. Yeah. Uh, and then the other one it actually is a journal. Awesome. So I have two that I've written personally myself and others that I'm in with someone else. Yeah, there's, does everybody, anybody here not have an idea for a book? Anybody still like, I want a book, but I have no idea what to write about. Anybody raise your hand, please, or unmute. A little bit. Laura, but yours is your story. So your story book. So that's my Love Yourself Successful book. That's where you share the, your lessons, your story of how you got from where you were to where you are or the, the path you took or the traumatic experience or it's your storybook, so to speak. Now you can still teach a little bit in there if you want and provide lessons or stuff, but that's typically one of the types of business or books. Um, the other type of book is more your system book. So like if you have a training that you teach with um, three steps to whatever, blankety blank, right? Three steps to blank. Then you might write the book about that training and so whether you do the training live or in person or you've taught it already and you have modules of training and a course somewhere you can take those recordings and transcribe them and or take the content and stick it into a system book so this was my jumpstart your business in 90 days program that we transcribed 10 90 minute calls we transcribed and took the handouts from and then made it into this book and so I had my assistant do some of the heavy lifting, all the getting it ready for me, right? And taking away some of the gobbledygook, right? <laughs> There's gobbledygook in our calls, right? So taking away some of that, narrowing it down to something that I could actually go in and edit through, so to speak, and add the intro and the exit kind of chapters. So this is a system book. So you could go buy my $2,000 program or you could buy the $16.95 book. Right. So, right. Like, but it's not quite the same experience. Right. But you want to have your content in different experiences because some people love books. Some people would rather do a do it yourself training. Some people would rather just hire you, go to an event or whatever. So, I just want to get you thinking. Right. There's quote books. I've had people write just a quote book. They have like 30 or 50 of their favorite quotes. They can be some of yours, but many of other people's. And you just put a quote on every page. Uh, there's tip books, right? There's tip books that you could write. If you have something to teach and you are just full of ideas or tips or short little snippets, write a tip book. And there's a tip on every page with a picture or something. It doesn't have to be in depth, long uh, things. Laura, do you have a question? I'm, I comment, normally I mute myself. How about a daily book, like a, um, like a, some people use spirit, or, um, like a daily, a daily reader? Yeah. You could do a daily book. I think, Luana, this is the one you're in too, right? Yeah, you can, a daily read. Yeah, I'm in that one. Uh -huh. Yeah, so her and I are in this one and it's just a short little snippet. Um, like it's a, a calendar. It's, it's like a calendar slash journal. And so every page, so there's my page. It's just my picture and a, a little <clears throat> um, motivational kind of it's like really five sentences max and then a teeny tiny two sentence uh, intro with a link to my website and then it's just two pages of journal so you could do that and have a book and you could have people pay you actually like 200 bucks or something or 100 bucks to do this and then i could pay for you to get the book done 
this is a gazillion pages. I don't even know how many pages. It's probably 365 mm -hmm. days or something like that. <laughs> it's fat. <laughs> it costs money to print. Okay. Um, so there's that kind of book. There's so many different kinds of book. Anybody else think of something that I haven't mentioned yet? How to? A how to book? Uh -huh. A language book? It could be, uh, yeah, well, it could also be a dummy, like a process book. So maybe um, you teach a specific thing. It's more like a dummy book, you know, those dummies books. Um, I just want to get you thinking. So I don't want you to get stuck on what to write. And so the storybook and the system book, the storybook takes usually the longest time. And that's usually the one people want to start with. And that's what I wanted to start with too. But I gave up on that and just did a couple compilations instead <laughs> because I wasn't getting the other book done. Yeah, Linda, what's your question? You're muted. Yeah, I have a question about the storybook. I'm thinking of writing a, my story because I overcame several different major health challenges and in there were some emotional traumas. My, my question is always, do people really want to read all that? Because that's all like, like the yucky stuff. But then the point of the story is so that people will go, wow, she's really been through a lot. She was through this divorce with this horrible husband and she was through this. And she, so how much detail do you go into when you're really telling your story or do you just kind of give the main points of it? Because the main point is, I overcame it and that's why I'm a health coach and that's why you want to hire me because I have all these healing modalities that I'm familiar with that I've used in my life to heal me. Right. So there's lots of answers to that question. There, it could be, <laughs> you could write one chapter in someone's book, like one of my books or somebody else's book who writes, uh, who contributes stories on overcoming things, right? So mine's more of a practical tactile, but there's plenty of books out there that um, talk about that. So you can write a chapter and get published quickly. Okay. So that's the quickest, most inexpensive way, most likely, but you could certainly write your story and that's, so if you're selling, you sell, uh, health coaching and then products with the program that you teach, right? I don't sell any products. I'm just getting started with health coaching. I'm in the total beginning phase. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, um, so the, I would say if you're in the beginning stages of your business, right, usually we're focused on money at that point. We need clients. We need paying clients. We need to make money. We need to get some regular things going so that we can pay the bills or whatever and run our business. That is not the time necessarily to spend five or 10 hours a week on your book. That is the time to spend on marketing and selling in your business. This is the business coach hat on me, right? So this is not, yeah. the, take off the publishing and let's get practical. Like, what do you need to do to make some money in your business? It is not to write a long book or complicated book. If you want to do a book quickly and get published to get some uh, people to your website, then honestly, I'm not just trying to sell you, but you want to be in the compilation book. Because you can get published, this all of us would promote it for you. You'd get more people on your list and you might get clients from that as well. But also you can get speaking gigs. You have a book then. You have a book pretty quickly, only writing one chapter while you're focused on marketing and selling, marketing and selling. That's my opinion. Whether it's my compilation or somebody else's, that's what I would do if you really want to be published this year. Do that first. Okay. Like I did in the beginning, I was in three different compilations because I was focused on marketing and selling, getting clients. I had to build the clients. I had to pay the bills. I had to, you know, get stuff done. I had to pay for the coaching and all the workshops I would go to and all the stuff that you need to do when you run a business. So that's my thinking. That's my practical thinking on when it's good to write a book. Right. Okay. Yeah. Know. Because I had heard, I didn't know which came first. The, the book I don't even have a book. I don't even have a website yet. So I'm like, do I write the book? Do I do the focus on the business? Yeah, well, yeah. that would be um, getting some uh, business coaching. Like I'm just saying, that would be really helpful for you because you do need a website, but you don't need a website in order for someone to pay you. So you could network and someone could say, oh, I want some help from you. Here's my credit card and they can pay you without a website. We know that. Yeah. But how long can that really go on without getting a lot of, you know, getting, you have to get some credibility and some positioning in there. So 
This isn't business coaching one-on-one -on -one info call. This is publishing info call. So happy to chat offline for you if you want that information. Thank you, though. Thank you. Yeah. What other questions? Anybody stuck on what to write? Or can we move on to other details? If okay. you're stuck on what to write, I have some tips over on my website. Yes, she does. She does help people get that book stuff out of you, that content. Awesome, Moana. Good plug. See, always be marketing. She's a student. She's always be marketing. Okay. So then if you know what you're going to write, then let's figure out the timeline. We have to have a timeline or you will never get this done. La, like, right? Like, I want to publish this year. Really? Well, do you know what that looks like? Like, do you know when you want to publish? So the authors, Lori, have a question. Question. Do you do the timeline or the outline first? Uh, you do the timeline first. Because if you st get stuck on the outline, we want to kind of get you motivated to write and get some deadlines in place. So if you really want to publish, say you're having an event in October and you really want to publish before that so you have the books ready to give to the people who want to come to the event, right? I give books to people that come to my event. Um, if you uh, want to do that and your event is, say, October 5th, Okay, so I have to, then we have to backdate everything that you want to happen. So if you want printed books in hand on October 5th, and we're going to use Amazon to publish, for example, and you're going to kind of do it yourself, but maybe get some help. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Then it also depends if you want to do an Amazon book launch. Okay, or if you don't care about that, because the Amazon book launch, if you're going to do a bestseller campaign, uh, you do the Kindle version, the ebook first. That's really what you do. You sell it for like 99 cents. Some people sell it for more, but I just recommend blowing it out at 99 cents. You don't make any money off your book on Amazon, you guys. I don't care if it's on print or an ebook. You just don't make money unless you know, unless you become like Brene Brown or somebody. You're not going to make any money unless you're somebody like that. Okay. So I don't focus on making money from my book. I want to make money from the back end of my book. Okay, so make sure you have things to sell, please, from your business besides your book. And I think most of you do, I'm not sure. But um, so if you wanna do an Amazon bestseller campaign and you're gonna do that with your Kindle, you don't put your print book on Amazon yet until the Kindle is done and you're done with the launch. When you're done with the launch, then you put the print book on Amazon because you don't want people buying the print book and it doesn't count towards the launch okay during your launch so you want everybody to buy the kindle on your launch day ideally okay you don't want them to have the option of kindle or print that day so we wait to put the print on until after the kindle launch so we have to figure out when your launch day is for your kindle first because when you put the print book on this is it takes about well it might take um up to a week it could take four days but once you put the final draft of your kin your print book and your print cover, which all has to be done before this, uh, then it takes Kindle Amazon to about three to four days, perhaps maybe a week, just in you know conservative estimate to actually approve it and say, okay, and then put it up. Okay, so then when they put it up, then you can order your sample copy. So if you notice this particular book still says um, author copy or whatever, not for resale. This is my author copy I got when I did it. I just never replaced it on the bookshelf because I don't want to. I don't want to waste a good book, so I put this one up. The point is that it takes about a week and a half for them to print your 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 sample, okay, and to ship it to you. So a week and a half to two weeks to get the sample to you to where you can look at it and go, okay, nothing's off center or everything looks good. The back, you know. The borders, you look at all the layout and stuff, you get the layout done by a professional, but still there could be mistakes, okay? So you want to definitely print the proof, um, proof the printed copy before you go buying a bunch of copies, okay? So then, so then we went two weeks, so once, once we approve it, once we're good with it, then we can go into Amazon and we can order the amount of books we need for our event or whatnot, or if you need a stack of books for something. So that might take another two weeks, maybe three, honestly, I'm giving you conservative estimates here, to get a bunch of books printed and sent to you so that you have them for your event. I'm just kind of giving that as an example. So you've got five weeks in there, perhaps before your event, 
that you need to make sure you're doing your Amazon launch or you're getting the print stuff up. I'm just kind of giving you, because nobody thinks like this. Nobody thinks, I always reverse engineer the, the timeline, okay? So it's really important to think like that because you'll be like, okay, my book's done. Now I need the cover. Now I need this. And I want to publish and do launch next, in two weeks. And good luck. That's not going to happen, right? So I want you to have realistic timelines on this. Uh, and so in that example, you might do your book launch. Um, October 5th is your event. You might do your Kindle book launch, or if you want to do an Amazon book launch, you can do that on, um, let's see, the beginning of September, perhaps at the very latest. So therefore you need to have the cover designed and the, imp and the, the, the layout on the inside where they typeset the, the um, pages, because the layout of the left side is different than the right, in case you didn't know that. You can't just put it in a Word doc and say, okay, I'm ready. Like you got to put all kinds of stuff in here, footers and headers and page numbers. And then it has to correspond with the table of contents. And then, you know, so the inside layout people are the last people usually to touch the inside, all right? And then, um, so, but long ahead, you could do the cover, you can do that ahead of time. You can do, um, uh, the editing has to be done when you're done with the draft. So you just kind of have to timeline this out. So uh, now if you're not interested in the Amazon, <clears throat> doing an Amazon bestseller campaign, then of course you can put the ebook and the print book up at the same time and print them and do all that. And, and you can do a bestseller. If you don't care about the bestseller status, then you can just launch it and you can still do a launch campaign for it. But um, you don't have to worry about, you might get bestseller still, you know, bestseller status is anywhere under a hundred. So as long as you're in the top hundred on Amazon on a certain day and you can prove it by a screenshot, right? You're technically a bestseller. Okay. But most people like to get to number one or number one new release, which requires a lot of purchases on one in one time period. So that's kind of a loose timeline. There's so many things that can affect that depending on what you want to do. Does anybody have questions on timeline and uh, anything to do with that? I have a question. Is it better to do the ebook or the Kindle um, thing for the bestseller campaign? I mean, there's a first release. Yeah, for the bestseller on Amazon, you want to do the Kindle ebook. So Kindle is ebook. That's the same thing. And it's usually a Mobi file or a um, Mobi file is the most common, but pub, a pub file is. So you don't create a PDF and just put a PDF there. That's not how it works. Okay, so there's a lot of specifics about how to prepare your file. Plus, it also has to be able to be read and they have to skip ahead with the table of contents. So you just have somebody do that formatting, okay? But yeah, you would do the Kindle first, the ebook first. Um, well, when you're writing it, are you asking that question when you're writing or launching? I think you were asking in regards to launching. You would launch the Kindle first if you're gonna do a- Launching. Bestseller. Yeah. Um, if, like I said, if you don't care about the bestseller status, then you can just put them up, whichever. You can put the print up first or the ebook. And if you were thinking of only doing an ebook and not a print book, I highly urge you to change your mind because print books are so much more important than the ebook. Anybody can create an ebook, a PDF, put it on their website. No offense, but like to do a print book, it's just a different level of credibility. Okay, so please, if you're thinking that, please, I urge you to get print, get it in print. <laughs> yeah. What about a flip book? Where does that fit into all that? Did you say flip book? Yes. Well, tell me what you mean by a flip book. Sorry. There's an app up there where you can, um, where, I think it's called flip. Oh, called you're talking flip. about online magazines and things that are virtual like yes. that? That is yes. not, I mean, yes, people do it for magazines and stuff, but that is not really, um, I would not do that for credibility status or becoming an author. You need a print print book, in my opinion. So we're talking building authority, building influence, becoming a really well-known speaker. You need print. You need a print book, in my opinion. And most people I know agree with that. Yeah. But there's nothing wrong with flip books. I just 
would use them for a different purpose. I wouldn't put my book book on a flip book. I would use some, I would do it in a magazine or you could do some other kind of, I don't know. Yeah. Anissa, did you have a question? You were on me. Yeah. So I was wondering what would be your recommendation for, um, like a systems book as far as the number of pages that would be um, reasonable, um, not too much, you know, not overwhelming, but not too slim. Um, well, books are becoming smaller and smaller these days because people are liking bite-sized information. So um, my system book is a pretty, it's a pretty, I think it's small, but it's a, um, with, I mean, it has lots of back end pages, by the way. So, I, you know, you can fluff a book up, by the way, with a lot of different back end pages. And I highly recommend you do that. Like, look, the ideal speaker for your next event. Okay. So, it has a picture of me speaking. Um, here's a free gift you can get. So, back end pages are critical, and nobody thinks of this stuff hardly ever. Okay. Most authors write their thing and then they forget. They forget to do that. But um, how many pages is mine? Um, it's 106 pages, well, realistically, it's about 100 pages, realistically, but in book pages, that's not Word okay. doc pages, right? So, um, I don't, I think around 100 pages is a good size book these days. And okay. now there's something to consider if you get too small, you really want a spine, right? If you want a spine on the book where it says your name and the title, then there is a certain page count. It's 96 pages, I believe, in order to be able to write something on the side, okay? So 96 pages, I think, total. So I have more than 106 pages here because I have all those front and back pages. So it's probably more like 130 pages, if you think about it. Okay. So just okay. a thought, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so, Katrina, when you say 130 pages, I'm an academic by training. So do you mean like single spaced, one inch margins? Um, and, and, I mean, I'm serious. I just want to get a reference because I know what my dissertation so was. Okay, this is, yes, good question. So when you're writing, you're going to do it by word count. So I could be wrong, but I think this book is about 50,000 words, okay? It's either 30 or 50. Let me look it up while I'm sitting here if I can maybe find that out for you. But you wanna go by words because you're probably gonna write in in Word and you might do single space, 11 point font, single space with wide mar or narrow margins. So you might only, you don't count the pages that way. I get it, I get what you're saying. So count the words, okay? Got it. And then, Got it. so I think, um, let me see if I can find that while we answer some other questions. That's um, very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I get it though. Because you won't know the actual page count until somebody goes and formats the inside of your book, right? So you're going to write it in Word and you're going to give it to that formatter in Word, just regular Word. Don't do a bunch of formatting because then they'll have to unformat it and you'll pay them extra to unformat it so then they can go format it. So don't do a bunch of formatting. I've had people where they put text boxes in their in their pages and then add some content. I'm like, oh my God, no. You have to take everything out of the text boxes. It's just be plain text on a page. <laughs> like, don't make it difficult because it will be expensive. <laughs> let's, say we're, let's say we're given a word count and we're supposed to be at that word count. Is it at or up to or in a month? Say that again. Exactly right, the word is it, let's say we're given a word count. Is it at that word count minimum of or, or uh, no more than? It depends can, on, you're talking about a compilation book? Yeah. Like in, yeah. So most people, if like for me, it's 1500 words, right? I think the one you're in is 1500 words. And so usually that's the max. And so usually for me, I'll do give or take 20 or 30 words, right? Okay. Uh, that's what I do. So. Yeah, but you have to just ask, I think. Oh, Kat Katrina? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. So I'm considering doing a, like a collaboration book. Uh-huh. Okay. And I've heard somewhere, it may have been through you, but I didn't understand the whole process of where, I guess you get other authors to pay you. Yes. Can you touch yes. on that just a little bit? 
It is such a great business model. As you heard, Luana has been in a ton. Uh, Kimberly's been in a ton. I've been in nine collaboration or done my own, right? So it's a very popular business model. And I'll put a page to my website where I have a video about it. So the, the link I just stuck in there is to the compilation book page on my new publishing website. And I just did a video about talking all the details around that, the pricing and everything. But basically, um, you could charge, the going rate is around 1500 to 2000 And if you okay. get 15 authors, which is a decent amount of authors, but even at the lower amount, 15 authors times 1500 is $22,500 that you would get, right? Now, mm -hmm. you could figure out how to do all this stuff yourself, which you can, I teach that, or teach and give you resources in my author training. So you could pay for my author training for like 500 bucks and then learn how to do it all yourself and then keep all the rest of that profit. That's all fine, I don't care. Like, or like what I'm doing is a new service is for, depending on how many authors you have, it'd be around 7,000, you pay me 7,000 and then I do all the work. It's either seven to 12, which just depends how many authors you got. So, um, and how much, how much help you need with it all, right? But that includes me doing calls with your authors to teach them what the hell they're doing and how to write the chapter. And like, right, I'm doing it with Laura, like Laura's uh, a part of a compilation book, who's one of my clients. And so I'm leading the calls for the authors to help them figure out how to write and make sure they're writing in the style that we want. And then just, I review all the chapters and give content ideas. And then I help facilitate the editors, the cover design and all that stuff that needs to get done. So yeah, so your okay. choice. Okay. Yeah. But think about it, if you got 20 authors and you charge $2,000, that's 40 grand, right? Then paying mm -hmm. someone like me like 10 or 12 is nothing because you're gonna get like 30 or $28,000 and you don't have to do hardly anything, just yeah. like, except for some of them, but right, yeah. right. So okay. there is some good money to be made and you get a book paid for you. Like you don't have to go pay to publish a book and pay for the designers and pay for it. So that's why I'm talking a lot about compilation book models because it's so cool. It's, it's and it's doable. If you have yeah. enough people that are following you who will say yes, right? And it can even be done with like, six people. So I have a client who, who, um, this is my client. Well, these are all my clients except for her, but she pulled in five other people on this book, the secret sauce of downsizing. So she's a realtor and author. And then she talked about mindset. She talked about organizing. She talked about, um, organizing, but also, um, letting go of stuff. And she talked about some other thing else and I forget, but they collaborated. So it could be six people. Now they didn't, pay me that because I was working with them all in coaching anyways, but um, they didn't pay me that big of a fee, but they all put in less money because they did it really a lot together and stuff. And they created an online course to go with it. So they had the book, they did a book launch, and then they went and created and recorded a whole bunch of extra trainings on their topic and created a course on it. They also did speaking gigs together as the group. So they did a lot together with this book. So it can be a real big, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. And if you if you include all those things in your author opportunity, it can even be more, right? It can be three thousand dollars or four thousand dollars or something. So idea, okay. ideas, ideas. Yeah. That's that's <laughs> awesome. Okay. Anybody else <laughs> have questions on timeline or? Then we can talk about other costs if you want, or um, what were you gonna ask, Laura? You were gonna ask something. Oh, the outline thing, yeah. We can talk about outline. Yeah, and then do you also, um, the, um, what is, I don't know how to say, the, um, the, the, the graphics, how you say, and the cover and the cover yeah, stuff. And stuff. Yeah. 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 And so, in looking at the different types of books you can write. I mean, the ones that I typically like to work with because it's easy for me and the authors is the six by nine size or the uh, five and a half by eight and a half, which this was my first time. And 
I'll tell you, when I got the box of books, I'm like, oh, they're so small. I had small book complex because they turned out so small, but they're perfect. And everybody kept saying, oh, they're the perfect size. They fit right in my purse. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's the pro. <laughs> so there's two different sizes for the typical. These are five and a half by eight and a half or six by nine, right? Yes, I know. And then, but there's also my friend Elizabeth publishes people in square books, little square books with like tip books. So this is, there's a bunch of tip books here. This, these are both on LinkedIn um, books, but that's a cool little size. Uh, and I can connect you with a person who does that. She has a turnkey system on that. So it wouldn't be me helping you, but um, I can connect you with her. If you're interested in that type of book, that's something super simple, easy, right? You just kind of like, let's punch out 50 pages of little tips. So again, do whatever is going to be the easiest and fastest to complete first and then work on another one if you want. Um, so as far as cover design, it kind of depends on what size, right? So it depends on like what kind of book you want to create. Now, there's also big uh, coffee table books or like Rochelle's book, I believe is a different size because it's a children's book. Sometimes they're a much wider size and there are um, places where you go to print those and and um, honestly, I haven't looked at Amazon, but I've looked at this other site that prints, um, oh, is it only eight? Oh, it's eight and a half by eight and a half. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, so it's more of a square, but a big square, right? So you can print all different sizes these days and print on demand. It's just, we have to look into that. So it definitely can be done. If you can think it, it can be done. I, unless it's a children's book or some kind of art book and you have to do pictures and arts, those are just going to get really pricey, right, to do color inside. So I highly recommend, I had a, this client who her first book was The Secret Sauce of um, Staging. And she's like, well, I want to put a bunch of pictures in there and color. I'm like, no, you don't, because you're going to be paying so much money for the print copies in color. And it was uh, at, at the beginning, she, she said, well, maybe I'll just do two different versions, one full color and print a certain amount over here. And I'm like, if you want to do that and give them to your realtor friends, go ahead. Right. But you don't want to mass produce color because no one will buy a $50 book from you. Right. So the cost just won't, it won't you won't make, you'll make this much money. Like you already make this much money. So to make it that much money is just kind of like silly. Anyways, um, so cover design, I have all kinds of different covers, uh, designers, okay? There's the kind where we can submit what we want, like the online places where I did get, um, that's where I got these books designed was an online source because I didn't have any idea what I wanted it to look like. And everybody that I went to gave me a picture of jumper cables. And I'm like, I don't want any jumper cables on the front of my book. I mean, <laughs> I think jumps to heart and I think jumper cables, right? <laughs> so I'm like, uh, we went through so many variations. It was crazy, but I paid, I only paid like 300, no, $400 and to get like a 40 different ideas for this book. So it was easy to weed out the ones that were ridiculous and narrow it down to the three to five <laughs> that I kind of liked and then, you know, figure out what I wanted to do from there. But like um, this book, I kind of knew exactly what I wanted it to look like. I had this picture and I thought, oh, perfect picture for the front of the book. And I knew I kind of wanted this. And I, I come from the advertising world, right? So I used to sell advertising in the local newspaper. I used to actually have to, to draw out what I wanted my client's ad to look like with the picture here, the headline here and all this. So I used to draw it out and give it to my designer and they would put it up. So that's what I did to this. And I think it was like $40 on Fiverr. So honestly, you can spend nothing if you know what you want. And maybe if you're, if I'm helping you, I can plot something out. And we can look at other book covers and we can say we want it to look just like this or just like this and it can be cheaper so again i'm all about building the most affordable book right now it still looks very professional and fiverr does a good job just like anyone else if you tell them what to do sometimes right so <laughs> but the funny thing is the love yourself successful book I went through 26 cover designs and I still didn't like them because my thought of what should be on the cover, it was me in this cute little black dress and high heels and a big heart in the background. And I had all these covers designed with that <laughs> and nobody liked them. <laughs> Do not print a book, a cover 
that nobody likes. Okay, you have to go for the the <laughs> um, what's that? Uh, 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 like the one everybody wants. So majority, 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 majority. Role. Thank you, because <laughs> nobody liked my ideas. <laughs> um, so I just kept having to go back to the drawing board, and I had to get over myself. So that was the hardest part. I had to get over myself. Like, well, I want it this way. I want it to look like this, and nobody liked it. And I'm like, oh shit. Okay, fine. I'll go. And then so, so it took a long time to get that cover done because of me. <laughs> so, so there's that. <laughs> um, again, don't overthink. Just get it done. Um, I can tell you what was going to look good, and we can put something together, and you just go with it. Stop overthinking. Now, all these have my branding colors on them, so it's not out of brand. They've got logos and stuff on the back. Um, you know, the only one I went off color is these ones, but there's a, a, a series. The next one's green, right? So... <laughs> Anyhow, okay, uh, that's just a little, and then I know lots of cover designers who privately, you know, they're personal graphic designers and they do book covers and they're anywhere from three to $800. And then they usually give you maybe one or two options. See, so maybe three or four, it depends. I talked with one, the other guy, the guy the other day that gives four design options. I just like options if I don't know what I want it to look like. So the book cover that appeals to all your audience. Yes. <laughs> okay, we have a few more minutes. Um, so that's kind of cover design. Let's talk about the outline. Anybody struggling with what to put in your book? What should the content be? Anybody? There's a lot of you that are showing your picture and maybe you're listening in, but are you getting what you came for? Do you have questions? I'd love to hear from you if you can make yourself uh, visible and see, make sure we're we're answering your questions. Laura, what do you have? Exactly. Um, I, did, I don't know what to, to, to tailor it down to. Meaning? I mean, um, like um, if I got a story, then I don't want to tell the whole story because it's that's monotonous. I mean, that's just, it goes on and on and on. So does the outline help? I mean, it's gotta be a theme. Um, <coughs> it can be a like, theme. Um, and, um, in that case, when you're telling your story, try to hold back from putting the title out there first. So write the story first, okay? <coughs> and um, my story, I weaved in some of my system in a way. I weaved in lots of lessons. So there's probably, in most people's stories, there's lessons. So you kind of just want to write it out. You just want to kind of get it all out. And then we look back at it and see how we can manipulate the content into certain messages or lessons or something like that, perhaps. And then we can see, okay, well, it would be great if you could add a little bit more tips. Like I forget who said it earlier. I think it was Linda who laughed about um, the weight loss thing, right? Well you learned this about it and lost weight. Well, what are the four keys that you learned and put a little checklist in there, right? Or something like that. So sometimes during your story, you want to stop and write some of that is out, it, perhaps. Is it like an eth 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 um, ethnographic approach? I mean, like, it's like... Um, You're using an awful big word for me, Laura. <laughs> what the hell is that? You just, you just you just put out your you put out your story and then you go back and you review it. And what are the major themes that, that pop out? Exactly. That's what I would do if I were you. Yeah. Because okay. I know a lot of your story. And I think you need to just write. I think you just need to write and write and write and write and write until you think it's all out. And then we look at it and then we think, now your story's not done, right? Your story is right, right, right. never done. But like the problem with this book was that I was didn't feel complete. I didn't feel like my story was done yet. But I had to wrap it up <laughs> because I needed to get a book out. Right? So I had to wrap it up. Now, I could write Love Yourself to the next stage or whatever the next book is and continue the story. So at some point, we do have to wrap it up, get it out, and then we can add the second thing, perhaps. So you want to think like that, too. And setting a, a deadline. Grace, question. 
I just have a question about the book covers, whether there's any science behind it, whether you put a, your picture on the book cover versus a, a book cover without a picture. Well, there's a lot of people, I would say the people that you see without their picture are also pretty well known a lot of times, right? I mean, you know, some that put their book cover on like, I want to say it was T. Harv Ecker, and he has his picture on his books, but um, I don't think like Brene Brown does, or a lot of the other one. girl wash your face, she does, whatever her name is, I forgot, whatever, I forget, <laughs> I always just think of that name, um, but when people know your name, they don't necessarily need your picture, right, and they usually just want, you want a bold cover, what you want to not do on your cover is do like what I did. It's like, oh, I have to have this picture of a meadow and I have to have this like shining light coming down and I have to like, oh no, don't. We need to sell the book. We need to sell the book. So we need to look at books that are in your genre on Amazon or in the bookstore. That's what I did. And that's how I came to this book because it was, uh, I saw the book, um, Book Yourself Solid by, um, what the hell is that guy name? Book Yourself Solid by Michael Port. <clears throat> and I saw that on the shelf and I'm like, oh, I want him to do something with love in the title. And I'm like, love yourself successful. And he had a very similar layout. I'm like, well, let's just do that because <laughs> that's popular. <laughs> so like, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I don't know if that's helpful, but uh did I answer your question? <laughs> Forgot what it was. It, it answered my question to a degree because, as far as looking in the genre, that's exactly what I thought was to do. But then I found that in my genre, they both exist. You know, the the ones with the picture and the ones without the picture. Oh, and so I, the picture. Right. I would say that you want to put your picture. If it's your own book, I would put your picture on the front. If you're trying to build a business and your business has to do with your book then I would definitely put your picture on the front. If it's a children's book, no. If it's a novel, no. If it's a compilation, probably not. Unless it's like this one where you can fit everybody, right? But yes, we're trying to brand ourselves. You're trying to do a book to brand yourselves and become a speaker. Let's put it on the front, please. That's what I would say. Okay, uh, that was helpful. <laughs> Thank but you. Long, short answers, I know. <laughs> so Katrina, um, real quick. So I'm wondering as far as um, creating a timeline, um, and I know that's going to vary depending on the type of book, but for when you've done like your um, system books for say, how did you build out or um, what factors did you consider when you were creating your time, your, your timeline? Was it based on a target date that you wanted to get your book out or were you trying to get so many books out in a year? What were kind of the factors that you used? <clears throat> well, um, I don't, I personally never do a big, I haven't done in the past a timeline for my personal books. I've had to mm -hmm. for my compilation books because my authors want a timeline, right? And I need to give them deadlines. So for my personal book, no, I just kind of willy-nilly nilly, kind of did it when I got to it kind of thing. That's okay. Yeah, but, and, and looking back, but I made a mistake on doing that for too long on this book. That's what I'm saying. So um, I would set a deadline if you are, um, at, if you are thinking that you might do that, might get putting it off and putting everything in front of it, right? So there's that. Mm -hmm. And just, okay. in, yeah. And I did put some stuff in the chat in case anybody's interested. There's like four different resources and links there. There's um, for next steps. So I have another free uh, publishing training. It's just a free class that I did a few years ago. I think this one's turning out to be a little bit better than that, but I can't remember what I talked about on that one. Anyways, that's just free if you want to really dive in. There's also um, the the page to go to if you do. Oh, my <laughs> my chair just decided to shrink on me. So I just came, okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> there's a page in case you do want to become an author in this book this year. The investments eighteen hundred or six payments of three thirty three. And there's includes coaching calls and it includes for the first time ever a speaker summit. So 
all the authors can be in this speaker event I'm going to do on, um, it's going to be on September 29th. So it's a one day speaker event I'm doing just with the people that have been in this book before this year or previous. So that's included if you're interested. Um, there's a publishing course that I already did that teaches you how to do it yourself. So if you don't want any help and you want to go learn how to do an Amazon book launch, you want to learn how to get your book done and do your timeline and get all the resources and the recommendations of who's to do what and all that with all that, then that's like $497. It's a course I did and that's there. Then I'm doing something live <clears throat> on August 30th. It's a one day um, work like book writing and planning call. And so I'm gonna give you that 497 course uh, when you sign up for the one day, which is 697, but you get the course, which you're gonna do before the event, ideally. That's why I wanna get people in now, like come to the, decide on coming to the event on August 30th. We can continue working on getting your book done, but you're gonna have all that information to get started. So you're writing, you're getting everything done and dialed in, and then you come to the one day and we're gonna get all those missing pieces done for you. So the idea is to get stuff done that day or plan it out or plot things out or tell you whatever else is missing. <clears throat> so that's there. So there's those four options if you want a next step here, no pressure. Um, or you can just come to call with me and we'll talk about which one's best. Um, or if you want help with the whole publishing, that's a whole, that we'd have to have a conversation. That's not a click and buy. Um, any other questions? I just wanted to throw that out before we got to the end. What, uh, any other things, questions? Leah, Barry, and Audrey, and Gabrielle, and Cindy, you are all very quiet. Is there, Beverly, is there any questions that you all have? Now is the time. Nobody. Anybody else? No? So who's gonna publish something? Who's got a date on the calendar? I'm gonna do this this year and it's gonna publish Rochelle. What do you got? Yes, so I have um, I have a book that's going on pre-sale here uh, within the next two weeks. And then uh, the paperback I've set a date for 7721. And the new book is called Carson Goes to the Flea Market. Oh, how fun. <laughs> awesome. That's cool. Seven, seven. So you already have the, because you have the previous book. So now you have an illustrator already. You already have the person for that. So that makes it a lot easier, that second one, right? That awesome. Cool. Anything you need support for this? Or are you just like proclaiming that it's going to happen? Oh, this is, it's coming out as a number one bestseller. <laughs> Good. Are and you doing really? Yeah. And and new <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> What'd you say? I said in new releases. There you go. Right. That's the way to be thinking. Um, good. Anybody else have something they're going to do for sure? Anybody? I think. Um... After this call, I had a couple of ideas, uh, but I really love because I'm getting ready to launch a course, but I like the idea of having the system books, uh, the system book to go with the course. I hadn't thought about that before. So I definitely um, am going to put that on my um, target to do to do list by um, October 31. Awesome. Love it. And if there's any way to get it done faster, transcriptions or delegating, do it. It's really worth it. Um, that is a question. Do you use um, a uh, transcription service or app or you just use your assistant to do the transcribing? <clears throat> any recommendations there? You would hire a transcriptionist, not just any assistant. Okay. Not fast. So the there's a service called rev.com that. Um, yeah. But there's yeah, also. I know it well. There's another one too that's cheaper, and I'm trying to think of it. Something IO, something. Otter. Like, oh, okay. Otter. It's Otter. Otter dot IO. I think is less expensive. Uh, no, service. wait a minute. Dot um is dot AI. Dot AI. Thank you. Okay. Otter dot AI. I think is cheaper. Um, it is. Yeah. Um, and then use paid monthly. So just sign up the month that you want to get them all done, and then. No, I'm just kidding. Like, I don't know. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, and just another little warning, like, please don't go design your own cover on Canva. I know they have book cover templates in there, but that's it. <clears throat> no, don't do that because it will look like you designed your own cover. Please don't do that. Please spend the money to get a professional book cover because this is what people makes people decide if they want to buy it. Okay. And the back cover copy, you got to write the back cover copy first, you guys. That is the, this is the promise to the reader. Like, what are they going to get out of it? That's the back cover copy. So important. I learned that from a book coach um, way back when, when I was first starting to do this. So. Excuse me, Trina, how do you spell that second transcriber? You said idle. How do you spell that? I'll put it in the chat. Transcriber. Um, it's probably not going to have the HTTP on it, but it's OTR.ai. Yeah, so it's not a live link, but you can copy it. And you can save the chat if you want. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Katrina, do you use uh, Shriver or what writing system do you use? What do you mean? Um, like uh, for fiction where you, a lot of people use the Shriver for writing, for editing, for doing chapters. Um, um, or like I'm using pro writing aid to edit. Well, I use a real editor, like a, an actual person. <laughs> um, yeah, I've never used an online editor service, if that's what you're talking about. And I would definitely make sure you're, you, you write the whole book and then get it edited. Don't try to edit as you write, because then it spoils your creativity a little bit, if that's what you're trying to do. I don't know. And I haven't heard of what you asked for, so I don't know. But um, And I don't do a lot of fiction books, but I know people that do. So I can, I can connect you with a fiction publisher if you'd like, if you want somebody to help walk you through or give you some other resources, just email me and we can definitely make that happen. Oh, thank you. Driver is supposed to be a popular software. I, right. I've never figured out how to use it. I bought it and couldn't figure out how to use it. So I just wasted money. <laughs> but it's well, supposed my, to be good. I love my editor and she's 20 bucks an hour. And so she can usually do one of these books and punch it out for like two or 300 bucks. So that's cheap because a lot of other editors are thousands, you guys. They could be thousands. Yeah. Um, just saying. So it's, it's the cost to do them, but it's a cost to do in a book. You got to spend money on your book. If not, it's going to be like, it's going to look like you didn't spend any money on your book and you're not going to get a lot of people. At least you're not going to get a lot of good reviews, which is not going to end up getting a lot more book sales. So, you know, I'm mostly the type of person who's going to help somebody use their book as a lead generation into the other things that you sell. So it's just going to be one thing that you sell. Now, if you do fiction books and that's all you want to do is write fiction or children's books, I mean, I can connect you with people who do that because that's not really, I'm a, I'm a marketer. I'm a marketer and a business coach and I want you to make more money. And like, there's not a lot of money in that, right? In those kinds of books, unless you really spend a lot of time and that becomes your full-time thing. And maybe get an agent at that point to, to, shop your pub, to shop your books to publishers. And so there's, you can do all of that, but I don't think for your typical nonfiction self-help or whatever, is it worth it? I don't think. Where do we find your editor? Um, yeah, you can just connect with me on email, Gabrielle, from my editor. But also, when you're in one of the programs, either you buy the training, uh, the do-it-yourself, or you come to the event, you're going to get all my list of resources, OK? All the people that I recommend. And um, But really, where I come in really handy is looking at your draft and telling you how to make it more marketable, make it so people want to buy it. So I look at adding those pages in, adding different marketing uh, strategies within the book before the book is done, where uh, right, doing stuff on the back cover and the front cover to make things, make people want to buy it more because like with like free bonus offers or things. So I look at those kinds of things to how to monetize and maximize the book itself. Okay, the book itself and how it flows with everything else you're doing in your business. That is key. That is the key. Um, uh, 
Barry, you have an editor. Good. She worked on Grants. Good. Yeah, there's a lot of editors out there. There really is. So this gal was recommended. She's a friend and she's local to me. So she actually comes over and takes the manuscripts and goes and comes back with good stuff on it. And, like, and so it, it, we have a good, it works for what I need right now. But, um, but definitely you can shop around. Just don't shop around for four months and waste a bunch of time. So just make a decision and go with it, right? That's the thing. All right, guys. All right, are we complete? We got enough info for now? Okay, if you need a next step, please let me know, reach out or take action. Um, happy to help, okay? Wonderful. Thanks, Katrina, it was awesome. Thanks again. Oh, good, thank you. Well, if you feel well, please thank write you. a little testimonial for it. That would be great. I can add you to my um, publishing website. I would love that and it would really help me out. So thank you. Perfect, will do. Thank okay. you, darling. Uh, good night, everyone. Good night.